All right, fellas. Inside, look at a Pro Supercross 252 stroke. This is Lesher's motor getting rebuilt. Uh, sorry for the background shop noise. It is a shop. Here's the the crank pressed apart. I don't actually know how many hours are on this particular engine. Uh, that's something we'll have to get with his mechanic on and, and check on. But pulling everything apart, take a good look at it. Here's a crank pin. You can see uh, while there is a little bit of like roller where you can see the rollers have been operating. These little pins here inside your crankshaft which sits inside that bearing right there. And these are thrust washers for your rod. There's no uh, damage or indications of damage. Everything looks really good. So you can see where those rollers are rolling right here. And then this is where the cage is. And then this is where your crank is on either side. And the washers are, little thrust washers are over here like this. You can see a little bit of what we would call fretting right there. Hard to see in camera, but right there. And that matches up with when you look at the crankshaft and you look at the tops and you look at the bottoms, you see that little bit kind of fretting there at the bottom. What's happening there is at high RPM, these crank webs want to flex on that pin. And the higher RPM you go, the worse that becomes. And it's because the weights, these crank weights are not dead center. They're offset because the rod is in the middle. And so they want to flex. And so you see that little flex mark that occurs over time. Here's the thrust washers. This is, uh, they're actually in pretty good shape. You can see where they're wearing, but there's no actual like feelable wear. So that's good. Both of them look about the same. Um, all looks good there in the crankshaft department. And then of course, there's no way to tell if this rod was gonna snap or not. High cycle fatigue is just the act of flexing or uh, loading something over and over and over again, and eventually they fail. This is why you actually service parts. It's not that you're gonna find that, oh, I can see the wear in the crank. If you were to see a crack, you would have caught it just before it blew up, like you got really lucky. But um, the cracks actually occur usually, you could call it internally. And uh, when the crack occurs, it then propagates and spreads and then a the part breaks or snaps or fails. So this is a stock rod. This is an OEM Yamaha rod. And we've had maybe the best success so far with that product, that part, versus some of the other ones as far as longevity goes. But nothing on these bikes lasts forever in pro use. So they have to be they have to be inspected and then of course replaced. So we're doing that. We're gonna to press together. Inside Jared Lesher's Supercross and Arena Cross YZ250. We're getting her all prepped up and ready to go back together. We didn't show you the disassembly part. I wasn't uh, videoing at the time, unfortunately, but we have vapor blasted everything, gotten it all cleaned up, ready to reassemble. We'll put new bearings in it and you still need to do uh, this bearing here. He uh, broke this bearing on his other engine at the Indianapolis Supercross round. And so we were doing a little bit of measuring to see what else we can put in here and upgrade this bearing design. Unfortunately, Yamaha has a custom spec bearing there that is unique to Yamaha. You can't buy it from a bearing house. So what we are going to do is fit in a KTM output shaft bearing from like a 250F. It's a, a roller bearing, not a ball bearing. And so it has a higher load carrying capacity, but in order to do it, we're gonna have to make a sleeve that goes in here and reduces the diameter of this outer area so that the bearing will fit. So it won't go into this motor. We've got a new OEM bearing gonna put in here. And then uh, this is the motor that did lose that bearing. We will put that in. We've got ceramic main bearings in here. This is something that, uh, they don't make power, but we've had lots of bearing issues over the last two years at higher hours. So nothing right away, but uh, you know, 20, 30 hours, you're starting to see some bearing failures. And we've had two sets of main bearings go out in that time frame. So we're gonna try these, uh, not sponsored or anything. So just gonna give them a go and see if they last a little longer. Um, ceramic bearings are extremely durable and that's one of their positives. Uh, you have to expect the tolerance correctly. Uh, if you don't, you will run into headaches with ceramic bearings. So you have to make sure that they're not too tight or not an aerospace bearing. An aerospace bearing or things used for precision machining like CNC machines will give you headaches. So anyway, we've got it all pretty up. Cases look wonderful and beautiful, uh, nice and bright and, and vapor blast. Compared to how it looked, it looks fantastic. And uh, just the grit and grime of hours and hours of riding adds up quickly on these things. So crank out of the freezer, heat the bearing up, heat gun, drop in the crank, goes in like butter. Now we got to very quickly work and get this transmission in so that we can put the other side case half on. So let's get that done. I'm shooting this by myself today, so I'm not going to be able to video all the process, but we'll give you guys a look as she goes together. Alrighty, meat and potatoes is together. Crank, transmission in. Always got to check that your transmission spins freely when it's in place with the shift forks in. And of course, you can kind of shift it, but it's very challenging to do without it all the way assembled. 
But uh, we got that together. Now we got to get this case all uh, sealed up or sealanted up for the other case have to go on. And then we'll put that on there and go from there. Let's crank cases together. We've got the uh, case bolts almost all the way tight. We're letting it set here for about 10 minutes. Transmissions together, spins freely. And what we'll do once we put the shifting mechanism together is confirm it goes through all the gears and that they're there, neutral works and all that. Crank seals in, we use a little RTV around it to uh, make sure that it sets in place. Crank spins freely. Uh, anytime you put these together, typically you gotta give it the crank a little tap. And that tap is to free it up in the bearings. Got everything uh, assembled here, minus the clutch, that's next. But uh, we've already gone through and verified transmission shifts. Now it's a neutral. This spins freely and is correct. Shift drum uh, is working correctly. Got the little, um, I don't know what you call it, collar on there. Everything's inside and seated. And of course you mark everything when we tighten it so that we don't forget. So uh, next is a clutch and case cover, and then we can get onto the top end. This process is continuing. We now have the cover on and uh, I've gotten everything installed, shifting working correctly. Clutch is now installed. This is a full Henson setup inside of Lesher's bike here. I don't think he's sponsored, he might be. I'm not 100% sure. I know that he's still paying for them, but uh, definitely a great product in general as far as durability and strength goes. And um, he's been using them for a couple of years now. So very, very nice product. <clears throat> We've, uh, this is actually gonna get replaced when he gets it back as far as the, the steels and fibers go. They're a little bit hot. This one got cooked over at the Daytona Arena Cross, so we'll have to get that in, but we didn't have it here. This is a quick refresh, and he's got some parts with him that we don't have here at the shop. So now uh, this is on, and if you notice, we don't have water pump impeller. Uh, this is a kit we've made for him to run an electric water pump. Jury's still out on that as far as if we think it cools better, but um, obviously we're trying to search for every little piece of horsepower we can, and so that's something that we played around with on this bike. We also have an electric fan on the bike so that we can try and keep things as cool as possible, especially in those short, indoor, tight arena cross tracks. It's just really punishing on these bikes. So, all right, we're going to get this water pump cover on, get this clutch cover on, and then we'll move on to the top end and get this custom Jared Lesher HP Race Development piston installed. These are uh, becoming available very soon through the website and other outlets, and they will fit a whole host of bikes. We'll show you that more here in a second. Uh, with that piston but we've been developing this now for almost 10 years and uh, that's the final product of 10 years of varied and improved development every single time we've made a part we've made it a little bit better now it's time that we get this piston installed get our cylinder back going and uh get this motor buttoned up this is our custom hp race development jared lesher piston you can see we got our part number on there signed jared signature on the top we got the 412 in our coating and of course, we got Weisco making everything happen for us. What's cool about this piston for us, and uh, we used to keep these secret, but I'm going to let the secrets out of the bag. See that ring pin location right there? It's at the 6 o'clock position as if viewed from above. This allows us to do some stuff with the ports you just can't do without it. Number two, this is not the base forging that comes with the Weisco Yamaha pistons. This is a different forging. We think it's a little bit stronger. Uh, we've proven that over the years. And for example, as one example to that, See where this hole's located? It's lower down than the base spec YZ250 piston from Weisco is. And so we get a little bit more strength underneath this ring. Uh, additionally, how the ring pin boss is in there, it only comes with this piston, not with the standard one. Um, we're also, with this core piston, it doesn't look like this. So we've gotten the intake window how we want, this cutaway how we want, pin bosses lightened up how we want them. And then it's a single ring design, maximize performance, reduce friction. We've got all the cool Weisco coatings and they really do work great for this piston. So where your uh, underside is and where the pin goes in is all coated. The ringland area is all coated with a high durability coating, same with the dome. And then of course the Teflon skirt coating, which is semi-permanent, um, does a really great job of preventing scuffing and doing breaking in. And uh, it's a sacrificial coating in case you lose a little bit of oil film, it gets too hot, there's whatever, you know, in mud conditions. It's a sacrificial coating that will help prevent your bike from seizing if you would normally seize. So that's that. We've also sized the piston a little bit differently. So the piston to bore clearance can be good for racers and that's what we built it for. So we've checked our ring gap. We had to open it up just a tad from how it came out of the box. That's good. We want a precision fit ring. We don't want a loose one. So uh, in this case, it's 0.33 of a millimeter is what we're shooting for. Next, we're going to check the piston to bore clearance. So how do we do that? Well, I get my ring out, set it aside. And what we do is we get our piston out. 
and you're gonna get it to where it just fits the piston. I can't do it with one hand, but this just goes past and you have to have a measurement point. And you set it on there and then you lock it in. So that's locked exactly to that piston size. And then we're going to get our dial bore gauge here. And we've already done this so you guys can see, but I've set it to zero, right? It's a little bit off, but here. Obviously I'm struggling with the cell phone. So you can see that it's at half a thou past zero. Okay. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna stick that in here and then get a relative measurement from zero and we'll measure the piston to bore clearance. We really recommend that you do this on every build. Now there are other ways you can do it if you're on more of a budget. You can actually use feeler gauges, stick your piston up in the bore, and if you've got a precision set of feeler gauges and everything's really, really, really clean, you can do that. Now this is our cylinder. It's actually a used one. It's came off the bike. Uh, this has got all our magic fort work and everything done to it. This has got uh, quite some hours on it and it's looking good. We're happy with it. We're gonna put this back together and run it some more hours and pretty soon we'll show you that with the bike going together. So let me finish measuring this piston to bore, confirm that number, put the piston on, put the cylinder on and the gaskets, and then uh, we we'll can finish so up this assembly. I come up with three thousandths, uh, just under three thousandths, but right about three, and that's good for us. Um, this is getting a little bit wore out, so after probably this top end, maybe one more top end, we'll have to go in there and replace it or replate it. We've got a new cylinder ready to go when that time comes, so no big deal. Another tip for you guys is to measure all the way up and down your bore. You know, so we measured it here um, for the video purposes, right? But uh, go all the way up and down and sideways and see if there's any taper to your bore. See if there's anything changing and uh, make sure that you get a good idea of what that cylinder looks like. Boom, piston installed, circle up in. As a reminder, we leave our gaps at either 12 or 6. I like them at 12 o'clock on most pistons and that's where our gaps are. When the forces of the piston are going up and down, that forces the clip into the groove. If the window was, say, at 3 or 9 o'clock, the G-forces would pinch that pin and potentially uh, pinch that circle clip and potentially have it pop out. So it's really critical that uh, you take note of that and that you assemble it that way. So there we go with that. Woo! Now together she goes. We've got our cylinder on, base gasket installed, dowels in place. We lubricated the dowels with some assembly grease. Studs with a little bit of assembly grease, they get wet over time. The water runs down them when you wash the bike. Here's our beautiful Lesher piston sign. Last 252 stroke engine to make a Supercross main event right there in front of you. And there are no secrets, guys. Just a lot of hard work. Um, we've got our custom head over there. That's all I'm going to show you of it. You can only get those right now at hpracedevelopment.com. Made for us by Fathead custom domes to suit these engines. We found some cool stuff with that. And there she is, finished product. Oh, so pretty. Here is the Luxon cover. We do run a flyable weight in this bike. Didn't show that on camera. Here's our fathead head, custom HP race development insert. And uh, a lot of people say, oh, I, know, I can see from the outside, I'm gonna go buy all the things that these pros ride. And that's great. These people who help them out need that support, need you to buy products. But it's what's on the inside that makes these things run. It's not what you can see. It's the details on the inside. So a lot of times, unfortunately, people go buy all the crap for these bikes, a carburetor or a head or this or that, and not send it in to get modified when the reality is the vast majority of power comes from modifying these things. So you can bolt on everything you want. You can put a cover on it. Awesome cover. Nice product from Luxon. You can bolt on a head. Great product from Fathead. You can bolt on a carburetor. You can bolt on a clutch. But at the end of the day, those things are great and great products. But if you want performance, you really have to put the time in to get that out of them. Uh, we run standard ignition timing on the stator because we run a Git CDI box that we have mapped. And that's another example. A lot of people have reached out to me and said, hey, I bought a Git. Um, you know, did you buy it from us? No? Well, okay. And then they say, well, you know, it's not running like I'd hoped. And I'm like, yeah, you, you need the maps. You need the right map. And, uh, oh, well, can you give that to me? No, I can't give it to you. If you buy the CDI from us, we'll include it with that purchase. But if you uh, don't buy it from us, then you're just going to get standard maps. So, you know, you're going to get what you get. So that's one of the advantages to work with any tuner that you work in the country. If they say, hey, we have a package, which is a port job and a specific head and a specific timing or CDI or a pipe combo, you know, hit them up and buy that from them as a package because that is what works. And they've pieced that together and tested it to make sure that they get the performance out of it they want. If you go out there and try to build your own package with your own parts and pieces that you think is the way to go, you may end up with a worse result than than what you would really want. So that's the whole key to these is they work in 
harmony with each other. So the port, the head, the CDI box and ignition timing, the pipe, all of these things work in concert, the fuel, the jetting, in order to get a performance result you're looking for. Check back for more videos, like, subscribe, and oh, by the way, we probably gonna do something with this used piston. So check back for that. Uh, we'll get with Jared and see if they wanna give this away or do some kind of drawing or raffle. And we'll see what kind of details there are. Maybe you go buy some merchandise from uh, the Lesher website and uh, support his program a little bit. And every entry might get you a piston or something. We'll, we'll put details up on the socials at some point if we do that. It'd be kind of cool to get his race used piston.